Hi, everyone. This is Chris Kosis. I am the uh, Division Director of Midwifery at Stony Brook University Hospital in the Department of OBGYN. We are so excited to have the opportunity to be with you tonight to talk about uh, all the things that we do and the passion we have in doing them. Um, I'm joined tonight with three of my wonderful partners, um, Susan Liang, um, actually four of my wonderful partners, Susan Liang, um, Michelle Sauls, Rakaya Watts, and Maria Fisher. Um, in addition to talking to you about the what we do and why we do it and how we do it, we're going to also discuss some other services that we offer that are a little outside the normal OBGYN offerings. Um, we would love for you to post questions in our chat. You can do so publicly, um, but you also have the opportunity by uh, to post your questions anonymously by um, using this QR code that we've posted here. Um, we are going to get started. Um, so without further ado, um, um, Susan, I'm going to pose the first question to you. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the midwifery model of care is and what our philosophy of care is? Sure. So as midwives, we believe that Every person has the right to equitable, ethical, accessible, and quality health care that promotes healing and health. Um, where free care is grounded in an understanding of the social, emotional, cultural, spiritual, psychological, and physical experiences of the person. We believe in providing complete and accurate information so that you can make an informed care decision. Our care is also a partnership, and we encourage active participation in healthcare decision, as well as involvement of designated family members for these healthcare experiences. We honor the normalcy of women's life cycle events, which includes watchful waiting, non-interventions in a normal process, as well as knowing when we need to intervene and appropriate uses of interventions. Uh, we view pregnancy and birth as a normal physiological process that carries a significant meaning to women, the family, and as well as her community. Great. Thank you, Susan. You know, one of the questions I think we all get asked frequently when someone says, what do you do? And we say we're midwives. Um, they often ask what the difference between a midwife and an OB is, and maybe um, how we work together with um, physicians. So Susan, do you mind addressing that question? Of course. So a midwife is a licensed independent practitioner that provides care from adolescence throughout the lifespan, as well as needle, needle care during the first 28 um, days of life. This includes primary care, preconception, and gynecological, obstetric care, um, post-pregnancy care, menopausal care. Um, we practice in many different settings. That includes hospitals, clinics, birth centers, private offices, clients' homes. Um, and as independent practitioners, midwives are not supervised, so we do collaborate, co-manage, and counsel our physician colleagues when it's appropriate. Um, midwives and OBs provide great pregnancy care as well as are able to both safely deliver babies. The fundamental differences between a midwife and OB, of course, is education to lead us to our path, um, as well as with the different birthing specialties. OBs can manage high-risk or complicated pregnancies, whereas midwives normally will only manage low-risk pregnancy and births. OBs also have the surgical training to perform scheduled or unplanned emergency C-section. So it's just a nice continuum of care to be able to work together with our OB colleagues when our patients need a higher level of care. Super. Um, OK, so I'm going to move maybe to Rakaya for this next question. Um, can you share what some of the misconceptions about midwives are that we often hear? Sure. Um, one of the most common misconceptions that I hear from patients sometimes once they join our practice is, you know what, I kind of want an epidural in labor. Do midwives do that? Um, do I have to have an unmedicated birth since I'm with a midwife? Um, and that is not true. So midwives specialize in birth your way. And if that means an epidural for you, we support you in that decision. And if that means an unmedicated birth with the assistance of a doula, we support you in that as well. Um, another misconception that I um, sometimes hear when I'm out socially um, about midwives is that midwives only work in the home. Um, and that also is not true. Um, midwives do practice home birth and community birth. They work in birth centers and they also work in hospital institutions as our midwives here at Stony Brook um, work. 
something else that I sometimes hear in the community is, um, did you go to school for that? Um, was it was there an apprenticeship or did you you know take classes? Um, and midwives are masters educated. Some of us are nurses and some of us are not nurses, but all of us um, who practice here have a master's degree, meaning we were educated um, in the foundations of midwifery on how to provide the best care for our patients and their families. We prescribe medications. Um, and as Susan mentioned, we don't only care for women during labor and delivery, but also in the office um, through adolescent and menopause. Fabulous. Thanks, Rakaya. Um, and before I ask the next question, just a reminder, if you want to pose any questions anonymously, please um, feel free to use the, the QR code that you'll see up on your screen right now. Um, Rakaya, I'm going to hit you again. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about uh, a service that we offer that's called centering that isn't typically um, offered in a lot of other places? Sure. One of the very cool things about our practice is we have an alternative to traditional prenatal care. So traditional prenatal care, which is what maybe most of you are familiar with, is one-on-one -on -one care with a provider and a patient where it's pretty much the two of you in the room, maybe with a support person answering questions one-on-one. -on -one. We offer group prenatal care known as centering pregnancy um, in our offices where birthing people are grouped together based on your due date. So you could be in a group with other people due in January if that's when your due date is. And the majority of the time spent together is in a circle um, where there's discussions that are facilitated. There's lots of time spent building community um, and really talking about some of the normal things in pregnancy that maybe get missed during that one-on-one -on -one care. Um, there is always one-on-one -on -one time with the midwife who is facilitating that group if you have uh, private questions, if you need an exam, um, of course that is done separately, but the remainder of the care is done in a group setting. So you are able to take your own blood pressure, you're able to weigh yourself, you are to able to be an active participant in your care. And we know that outcomes are really great for centering. So in terms of satisfaction with our patients, building community and centering pregnancy has also been proven to reduce some of the disparities that exist between um, black and brown birthing people and preterm birth. So it's also evidence-based and it's really awesome that we have this option here at Stony Brook as an alternative to traditional prenatal care. Great, thanks for that review. Um, I think we had a very robust centering program going prior to COVID um, and had to pause it during COVID, but we have resurrected it and i um, happy to say that we're up and running again and. Um, hope that some of you might take advantage of that service. Um, we're Chris, gonna... can, I, um, hi, yeah. can I jump in for a sec? Please do. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to add to um, about our centering program is what's so wonderful to see are the relationships and friendships that form within the group. And, and many of our families will stay connected and beyond the birth of their children. And it's just a, a, you know, a great experience to be able to you know, establish friendships with people that are have children the same age as you. So going through that newborn phase together, and we see those relationships continue beyond the, their pregnancy care. So just a, another added bonus to, to uh, the centering experience. I also want to say something about centering. <clears throat> In my experience, um, the people who have had centering pregnancy, um, uh, as opposed to the traditional prenatal care, they just seem to feel so much more prepared for the childbirth experience. Um, I hear that a lot from people because we do so much education during these centering um, meetings. Um, the education is actually really supposed to be in, and usually is from one person to another. It's not like the midwife is teaching the whole time. People learn from each other. Um, it's a, just a great model. Thanks for that. Okay, Maria, we're gonna jump to um, breastfeeding. So maybe you can share a little bit um, of your passion about being a board certified lactation consultant and explain kind of what that is um, and the importance of breastfeeding in our community. Yes, hi. So um, yes, I'm very passionate about breastfeeding. And um, when I think about how I continued on my educational journey from midwife to midwife and lactation consultant. It really came from my own 
uh, experience with my first child where I realized while I had a lot of knowledge and experience um, on breastfeeding from my education as a midwife, there was still so, so much that I did not know. And, um, and so that's what started me on my path. But it made me realize that we, when we're pregnant, we focus so much on the pregnancy and the, and the birth, the birth experience itself. And we often don't give much thought to what happens after that baby arrives and how are we going to feed that baby? And what, what is that experience going to be like? And so many families come into that newborn experience truly not prepared for what does it look like for a newborn to eat? And what does that mean that they have to eat every two to three hours? And what is that like for us to sustain that going forward? Um, and why should we be motivated to do that? And the answer is because there is nothing that can replace the power of, of human milk for human babies. It's really magical and it's like medicine. And so, so we like to support people to not just make that decision, but have it become effective and successful for them to, to, to breastfeed the baby and to just making that commitment is the first step and learning about that is the first step. So there are uh, practitioners called um, International Board Certified Lactation Consultants who are people who have gone on for additional training um, to provide the knowledge and expertise to help not just to breastfeed, but also to pump and just have get as much human milk in your baby as possible. We're very fortunate that formula does exist for those circumstances where we cannot breastfeed or choose not to breastfeed. But when you when you do choose, often we need help. And um, at Stony Brook, we have um, built additional services, uh, an expansion of our midwife practice to include one-on-one -on -one lactation care. Um, so whether perhaps you've had an experience in the past that uh, was difficult, challenging in terms of breastfeeding, we can meet with you before this next baby arrives. Or if you just need to come in to talk about breastfeeding, because maybe you come from a family that's never breastfed before um, historically, and there's not a lot of community support for that choice. We can help educate you um, and get you set on the right path. Um, and then if you are having trouble after you give birth, you can come in to see us. Uh, that We have a team of midwives that are also IBCLC trained to do one-on-one -on -one lactation support um, as, as needed. So um, that's just a little bit about what we do. In general, lactation consultants um, also are available in the community. So are there some that uh, will come to the home? Um, uh, in our situation, we have you come to our office and that enables us to see many people over a short course of time, but it is a one-on-one -on -one session. And um, lactation services are mostly uh, covered by insurances today, which is a huge change from even 10 years ago where families had to pay out of pocket for that service. Great, thank you, Maria. I'm gonna jump to uh, answering one of the questions um, that is, has been posed uh, anonymously. Um, and the question is, what do you do for pain management when uh, delivering a baby? Um, somebody wanna jump in here and answer the question? So I'll take it. So we have many options. We have, and it, some of it will depend on what stage of your labor you're in. So in, in the early stages of labor, um, we offer, if we're talking about medications specifically, we offer um, IV narcotic medications um, that, uh, like I said, we'll go in through an IV that will help you to get some um, naps in between contractions, you know, so that is something that can be effective in early labor if we need that. Um, once we're in the active labor phase, when labor is more intense, again, from a medication perspective, we have epidurals that are available. And then we also have nitrous oxide, uh, which is also called laughing gas. You might have experienced that at your dentist's office where you inhale and it helps promote relaxation. Um, and that's you use it as you need to. So those are, those are some of the medication options that we have available. 
But then as midwives, we also specialize in what we call non-pharmacologic ways to manage pain. So we promote moving around in labor. We have showers in our hospital. We don't have tubs, but we do have showers to use hydrotherapy, aromatherapy, massage therapy. We have birthing balls um, in the institution to help, you know, just to stay out of bed, upright, moving around. And and really just our presence and being um, with you to encourage you can be as effective as medications often. We also encourage the use of doulas. And you know, going back to some questions that we get sometimes about what is a midwife, um, is that like a doula? Sometimes people will ask. No, it is, it is different from a doula. A doula is a professional labor support coach, but they are not clinicians. They are not um, there to make medical decisions for you. They don't perform examinations. They're there to support the laboring person and their partner. Um, and provide some of that non-pharmacologic pain management that we just talked about. So, um, so we do encourage doulas um, to come into the hospital with you or to maybe start in your home. So um, I hope I addressed the question. Does anybody, did I leave anything out in terms of pain management options? I think just one thing would be that we also encourage you um, and can provide you with resources for um, prenatal childbirth education because being prepared um, for this experience and this journey um, is incredibly helpful um, in addressing the anxiety and fear and pain that may come along with um, you know, your first labor. So um, that's one of the other things that we do. Michelle? Yeah, I was just, you just read my mind. <laughs> I was just going to say that. And I don't know, we used to have mid, meet the midwives um, every um, month in person where we would kind of talk about some of our midwifery um, uh, experiences and explain some of this once a month. And my, my line was always um, childbirth, um, you do experience pain, but you don't need to experience suffering. Right. So you if you experience pain, but you have coping strategies that you've learned before you went into labor, if you have emotional support and if you have knowledge, um, so you're not afraid of the process and you understand what hap what is happening. Um, it's very possible to get through birth without being medicated and relying on different um, modalities to get through the pain. Great. I like to um, I like to equate it to running, you know, the New York City Marathon. Um, you know, you would never send someone out to run. 26 miles without doing some training and preparation for that. Um, and, and I think labor is a similar experience where, you know, with, with some training and preparation, um, you can get through it and get, you know, reach that finish line of, of having your baby in your arms. But you don't need to, you can always go get an epidural if you want it. <laughs> that's true. And that's, and, and yes. And sometimes, it's exactly what the situation needs and calls for. And, and sometimes we are the ones who are encouraging someone to accept an epidural because maybe perhaps they're just exhausted and it will allow time for the body to, to rest and relax and, and then dilate more easily. Because if we're tense and exhausted, that can actually inhibit our labors. Okay, I'm going to jump over one question, but I will get back to it. Um, Janelle, I'll get back to your question. But Alex is posing a question. Um, his partner's currently five months pregnant. And as a new father, do you provide support to fathers as well? Well, that's a great question. Can I take that one? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that as midwives, we look at the um, I think we look at the patient, not just the mother, but it's the, the family, right? So it's the dyad of the mother and the baby, but it's also the, the woman's partner. Um, and as fathers, we believe that, and we know from data that the involvement of fathers in the prenatal care um, during the birth and in the postpartum period um, leads to better outcomes for both mom and baby. So as midwives, we encourage very much um, the participation of dads we encourage dads to ask questions. Um, we encourage dads to be active participants in the birth. Um, and we also encourage dads to reach out with us um, during the postpartum period. Um, there is such a thing as postpartum depression for dads. That's a thing too. Um, and we have resources that we can um, help dads access care for things like that. 
Um, and our Centering Pregnancy program, actually, um, we also encourage dads or partners, moms, other moms or whoever the person feels like um, they want the person to be involved with is, um, we encourage them to bring them to the Centering Pregnancy um, meetings as well, because there's a lot of involvement from the, from either the father or the person's um, partner. So we know how important dads are to this and partners are to this, and we encourage a lot of participation from them and do provide um, support as well. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, Janelle, I'm going to jump back to your question. So Janelle is asking, how does someone go about midwifery without first being a nurse? So I'm going to let Rakaya answer that question. Okay. So um, midwifery is a master's degree. So you can have a bachelor's degree in another background. <clears throat> Maybe you were a science major or education or um, something else. And then there may be some prerequisites that you need to take before you can become a midwife. Um, and the program that you decide to go to will determine how many years. Typically, it's about a two years master's program where you would learn all the things um, related to midwifery. So yes, you do not have to be a nurse prior to becoming a midwife. Um, you do have to have a bachelor's degree because the midwifery um, is a master's degree. So you have to do your bachelor's first. And there are many programs um, that will help bridge any gap if you are missing any classes from your bachelor's degree or if you did it a long time ago um, to help you have all the prerequisites that you need to join a midwifery program. Um, and honestly, I think that allowing a profession, having a profession that has diverse backgrounds, meaning um, people who come from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds, educational and life, helps to enrich our profession and really makes it um, what it is. So I think it's a wonderful thing when we have people outside of nursing who choose to be midwives, the same way it's wonderful when nurses also choose to become midwives. Thanks, Rakaya. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask another question and this one is gonna go out to Michelle. Michelle, do you think you could share a little bit uh, about the, the services we offer in terms of primary care and behavioral health? Sure. So um, although pregnancy for many women is an exciting time, full of joy and um, uh, joyful expectation, um, it's also a time of uh, transition and change. And so really um, unique period in a woman's life. Um, so this can, you know, periods of change can cause stress. Um, and a lot of the women we see as midwives, um, uh, about 20% of them um, will develop either um, a mood and anxiety disorder during or after pregnancy, about 20% of them. So uh, as midwives, we're primary care providers. Um, we can screen for this, which we do um, several times throughout pregnancy. Um, and when we um, realize that somebody has a mood or an anxiety disorder, we can uh, start treatment for them either by referring for therapy, um, starting them on a medication um, ourselves, and then referring for um, psychiatric treatment um, management um, from then on. Um, but um, we found as midwives in this practice especially that although that sounded like a good idea to refer to for care, um, we were very, very short on, on the amount of um, therapists and psychiatric providers in the community. Uh, and the women that we were caring for, we, um, we found it difficult to get them the help that they needed. So um, we are very proud that we have helped to develop a um, perinatal um, mental health program here at Stony Brook. So I myself am a psychiatric nurse practitioner as well as being a midwife. Um, so we have a program where if a woman with either a pre-existing mental health issue or somebody that develops one during their pregnancy or postpartum, they can be referred to our program um, and we can manage their medications for them as needed. Um, we also have um, some therapists with us now. We have two full-time therapists. So myself, um, I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. We also have a wonderful psychiatrist named uh, Dr. Rossi, who also specializes in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders and prescribes medications and can manage medications. And we also now have two full-time psychologists joining the team who are also specialists in the perinatal period. Um, and all of the experts in this field that we have at Stony Brook are also additionally certified um, as perinatal providers. Um, so we're very, very excited and very happy that we have this service here at Stony Brook. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, we are 
really excited about this service and hope that we can continue to expand it as we go forward. Um, okay, um, I think uh, what we'd like to do now is um, address one more question before we go to our last um, topic. Um, and that is, can you have a vaginal birth with a midwife after undergoing a C-section with the last baby? This question was anonymous. And Susan, I'm gonna throw that one to you. Sure. So everyone deserves to have a try of labor or what we would call a toe lag. Um, having a vaginal delivery after a cesarean section, it really depends on what happened with the C-section, right? Um, care in terms of labor and delivery or just healthcare is very individualized. So that really is dependent on the operative report from your last pregnancy, as well as other risk factors in pregnancy. Um, when we're talking about a uh, of labor after cesarean section, we do also work very closely with our doctors in case of any emergency if we were to arrive, we would have the assistance of them. But in short, yes, you can have a vaginal delivery with a midwife after a C-section. Super. Okay. Um, last question, I think I'm going to throw to Maria. Um, can you talk a little bit about what um, folks typically think about when they're trying to figure out their care provider or when they're deciding to choose a midwife? And also, this will help address uh, something that was a question in the chat. I think if someone is considered high risk, um, can they still use a midwife? Sure. Um, so, so I think one of the things to, to think about is you know, what What are, are you looking for in your birth experience? Um, how participant do you do you want to be? As Susan mentioned in the beginning, we, we um, engage in a relationship. It's not just an office visit. Um, so, so that's one thing that I, I think is important to think about. And even um, things like, do I want to try to attempt to have a baby without any pain medications? Because that's something that we, you know, pride ourselves on being, we're experts in unmedicated births. Um, consequently, we, we have extremely um, high statistics for successful vaginal birth after C-section. So that, that might be another reason why people might seek out a midwife is to help reach that goal of a vaginal birth after cesarean section. Um, other things to think about would be what setting do you want to have your baby in? There are some people that want to choose out of hospital birth, whether it be a birth center or home birth. So, um, so that would be another thing to consider. Um, at Stony Brook, we provide hospital birth only, but, but you could, it could be as low risk or um, you know, low interventive um, as the situation um, dictates. Or like I said, if you if you you know want to have an epidural, or if you should need a cesarean section for some reason, we can provide all of those services within the context of our of our hospital. So that's um, that's an advantage in that we have full scope um, uh, interventions available to you. But if we don't need them, we don't you know we don't we don't go to them. Um, and at Stony Brook, we also have. Um, uh, the highest level intensive care unit for, for infants, if that service should be needed as well. So, but to the question of, and, and there are lots of other things like, you know, what is your insurance situation? Is, uh, is there other midwives on your insurance plan? Um, and if there aren't, they should be um, by New York state rulings. Um, what's the you know, availability within your community close, you know, is it convenient Etc. How far are you willing to travel to to see that midwife? What hospital do you feel, see yourself most comfortable having your baby in if you choose hospital birth? So those are some things to think about. But really, it's about what your birth experience, what you want for that. And we find a lot of families will come to us perhaps after a birth experience that maybe wasn't so positive for them, and they realize then that's maybe when they discover midwives is after a less than positive birth experience where maybe they felt a lack of control over what happened in their birth experience. Um, and in regard to the question of, of risk factors, um, because of the way the Stony Brook midwives practice and that we do practice within a hospital with the services of physicians available to us should we need them, we can actually take care of women with a lot of risk factors that you, you might think of yourself as high risk, but maybe for us, it would be okay. Um, because we have the support of physicians, 
nearby should we should we need them. Um, and the big thing is really, if you think you are high risk, come talk to us, we'll go over it. And you know, we'll be honest with you if we think that it's not appropriate for you to um, go through your pregnancy care with with a midwife. We'll we'll you know let you know if we think that yes, you know you need the services of physicians. But often many things can be co-managed. So you will primarily see the midwife and then have a few visits with the high risk physician as needed. And we can do what we call co-management. Um, so. I don't anybody want to jump in about things to think about when choosing a midwife or I think one other thing I just wanted to say too, I'm not sure if everybody, if it was mentioned that midwives um, in New York state, we have full prescription authority so we can prescribe drugs as needed during the course of the pregnancy, um, you know, et cetera. So some people don't realize that. I'm sorry. I think that a lot of people, a lot of us, a lot of midwives come into this profession uh, because they want to empower other women, right? So they believe in autonomy. They believe in a woman not feeling like there have been things done to her or told what to do without understanding why. Um, and I think that is the real take home philosophy of midwifery is empowerment of other women. Um, the, the, the word midwife means with woman. Um, and I think that people who come to midwifery as a profession have a calling almost, uh, to provide empowering um, person-centered care. And I think that's one of the, uh, the hallmarks of our care. Totally agree, Michelle. I think uh, also being advocates for the, the people and the families that we serve yes. um, so that they have a voice in their care um, is really important to us. And we're, we are really committed to that and passionate about it. Um, there is one more question. Yeah. I was okay. just was going to add one thing to that, Michelle, you know, that was beautiful what you just said. Um, so true about how passionate we all love, we love what we do. It yeah. is not an effort for us to come to work every day because we really do love our jobs. Um, but, you know, we, we take care of all sorts of families, um, transgender families, same sex families. So while, you know, in the course of tonight, we have used the, you know, the, we've talked about women. I just want to acknowledge that we take care of, of all people, all pregnant people proudly, and welcome, we welcome all types of families into our practice. And provide gynecologic care to those people as well. Um, okay, there was one more question uh, that was posed anonymously that kind of um, brings us back to the uh, the subject of risk, but um, is there a weight limit to pregnancy care with midwives? I want a midwife, but I'm afraid I'll be told I'm too big. Um, anybody want to answer that one? Or I can answer that one. Yeah, um, so so there there is a consideration of BMI, um, body mass index in pregnancy care. Um, but again, this, like Maria mentioned, um, each person's situation is individualized. So we have to also consider if there are any other um, uh, risk factors um, that would put you at, you know, that would increase your risk above and beyond perhaps an elevated BMI. So it's hard to say, um, give an absolute there. Um, but I think that if you're interested in midwifery care, we would love for you to reach out to us um, and we can have a conversation about that. And the way to do that, again, would be to um, reach us through our website, which is www.stonybrookmidwives.com. Um, does anybody else have any um, parting, parting words before we wrap up? You know, just one, one other thing about, about you know, pregnancy and, and the weight issue. Really, pregnancy is an opportunity for us to... Um, pay more attention to our health. You know, for, for a lot of people, it's the first time in their lives that they're thinking about what they're eat, eating um, and how they're living their lives. And it's an opportunity for change. And we want to help support that in terms of, of seeing pregnancy as a time of health and, and renewal and to support you. So, you know, so it's, it's more important to that we're eating as healthy as we can during that time. And we spend a lot of time talking about nutrition in the course of the pregnancy care. So, and if people need help on that journey, then we're gonna, we're gonna get you there. So, um, but it's, there's not just a, a clear cut answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Thanks Maria. 
Okay, so I think um, there's no more questions in the chat. Again, if you think of something um, that you'd like to discuss with us or ask us about, you can reach us through the website. If you're interested in an appointment with the midwives, please feel free to call our office, which is 631-444-4686. We are so thankful for the time that you spent with us tonight. We could actually talk about midwifery for probably a few more hours and not get tired of it um, because we really do truly um, love providing care to the families of Long Island, which we have been doing here at Stony Brook for 25 years and hope we'll go for at least another 25. Um, again, thanks for your time. Um, one last thing um, is that we have been nominated uh, for in the best midwife division for Beth Page's Best of Long Island for 2023. Um, and we would love to have your support um, by voting for the Stony Brook Midwives in the health and wellness category, um, and then in the mid best midwives category below that. Um, the, uh, the website for that is here uh, up on the screen right now. Um, and of course, you could also vote for the best OBGYN practice uh, who are our partners at Stony Brook. Um, thank you again so much for your time. Um, and we're looking forward to hopefully chatting with you or meeting with you in the future. Take care, have a good night and be well. Bye.